Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we are tackling part two of this laundry room and bathroom and getting it all cleaned up. Spring cleaning has been full blown in our house. We have our church party get together this weekend here at our home and we wanna make sure it is inviting and welcoming and clean. Um, and so I'm tackling projects all over the place. I told my mom the other day that I'm filming like six videos at the same time, which is insane. <laughs> so lots of content coming your way soon. Um, today, like I said, we are focusing on that laundry room and bathroom. The big thing with the laundry room is showing you how to clean the front load washing machine. It is a beast to keep clean, but no worries, I got you covered. So hang in there with me and let's go ahead and get started. So to clean the front load washing machine, the first thing you wanna do is to pull out the drawer that you put your laundry soap and softeners in because most of the time it has mold in it. I cleaned mine lightly the other day, but I wanna put it in my kitchen sink where I can fully submerge that. I have a single sink basin, so I filled that with some hot water and some bleach, and now I'm gonna go ahead and get that submerged. So now I have it completely submerged. I like to let this soak for at least 30 minutes um, until the water cools down. And I removed all the pieces and parts so that they can individually soak so that all of that black can come off and I can get all the nooks and crannies. So the next step is to remove this panel. Not every front loader has this panel. This one does. My last front load washer did not. But you pop this panel off and you can remove it if you want. I don't need to. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. And then you pop down this hose and it pulls out and you can drain. And it's got instructions right on the inside of the thing as well. And the instructions say to clean the pump filter once a month. I haven't done it since I moved in, and I know my father-in-law didn't do it since my mother-in-law passed away, and I don't know that my mother-in-law did it. So, this may be the first time this has ever been done for this machine, but I'll be doing it more frequently from now on. So now that that's cleaned out, I'm gonna replace that cap. Push that back in, place that back in place. And then there's another little cap down here that you just twist counterclockwise. And pull out. Yeah, I don't think it's been cleaned for a while. It's pretty gross. And then once you've got that cleaned, you just return it back to the same spot. And turn it clockwise until it's locked back into place. Okay. 
If you have the cleaning cycle feature on your washer, you can utilize that and run a like a fresh, I think Tide makes one if you wanna run that cycle. Um, I'm not choosing to do that today. I'm just gonna wipe it out. I wanna wipe out the door because our dog hair likes to stick to that and get some soap scum off and just give it a good wipe down. I wanna wipe down the seal, that type of thing. And then I'm going to wipe down where the drawer slides into the machine because that's where the soap goes into the machine and soap scum also builds up there so don't forget to wipe that down. And now if I ever have a choice in designing a layout of a bathroom in my future, <laughs> I am not putting a laundry room in it. Um, lint is everywhere. I don't know if you remember from my last video, but I put a cover on my toothbrush because I was finding lint even on my toothbrush every single time. So lint is always on the walls, on every single surface. It is everywhere all the time. It is a bear to keep up with. I'm wiping things down every day and I'm still finding more lint. Um, and that's difficult to try to maintain. Um, so I want my laundry room completely separate from a bathroom in the future. <laughs> now that we have the laundry room side of things done, I want to transition over to the bathroom side of things. Um, we have really, really hard iron rich water in our area and so it is a constant battle to tackle rust stains on the bottom of our bathtub so I'm gonna work on tackling that and then cleaning the toilet and just doing a quick once over and then I'm gonna sweep and mop this floor and then this room is done. That orange is exactly what I'm talking about it's a constant thing you can clean it up and it'll be back next week. Now I have found that there's only a couple things that work for that. Um, you saw how quick that went. That is a stiff brush and the Kaboom spray that turns from purple to white when it's ready. Um, Dollar Tree has the same product, just off brand. It works just as well. They just were out of stock. So I went and got the more expensive one, but I love this stuff. It works really, really well at getting soap scum and just helping the bathroom sparkle and shine like it's supposed to. On our bathroom side, we have this linen closet that stores kind of all of our towels and things like that. It's a complete mess. This was the first cabinet that I organized when we moved in. It's been a year. It's time to go through things. I want to check dates because medicines aren't effective past their dates. So I'm going to go through all of that. I'm gonna pull it out onto our bed to make it easier to go through, so let's get started doing that.
And now that's empty. I did grab a dryer sheet refill that I talked about in my last um, product review video. So I'll link that for you. All right, so like I was saying, I like to check expiration dates because of medication effectiveness. That also goes for any type of diabetic or keto testing strips. If they are out of date, they lose accuracy. And if you are a diabetic, especially type one, you don't want an inaccurate testing strip. That can lead to disastrous results and I don't want you getting an inaccurate blood sugar reading. So definitely check your strips. I know they're expensive, but I like to go through at least once a year, check dates on everything from mouthwash to medications to strips to skin products, things like that. They all have dates. And if you're putting it on your body, it's going into your system. So check your stuff. Even toothpaste. So I switched toothpaste because my dentist recommended it. This expired in March of 22. That's a year ago. Hand sanitizer that expired in December of 2021. Testing liquid for a glucometer. So making sure that your glucometer is accurate. So you test that and it's got some control liquid. It expired in 2021. Nail polish remover that expired in 2015. I don't think that's going to remove nail polish anymore. <laughs> I think that was honestly probably the last time I actually even wore nail polish that wasn't done at a salon. Now is also a good time to check your first aid kits and get the refills you need before you need them.
All right, now that I threw away something that was from 2015 <laughs> and got all that cleaned out and purged through and a little bit reorganized, I'm gonna get it all put back in the cabinet. Now that cabinet's a lot more organized. I don't have things flying at my face and I know that everything's in date. And then all I need to do is go through and fold that shelf a little bit better, make it a little neater. All right, so we have swept, we have mopped. This bathroom laundry room is sparkling. I will share that with you here in just a second. I swept and mopped without you because this bathroom is far too tiny to do that with you in here it would just be a nightmare. So I went ahead and did that and put some final touches on it. I will leave you with that. but I will see you on Friday for our next video. Until then, <laughs> bye.